Hello, dog lovers. Welcome to another live broadcast from BC, Vancouver, Canada. And I'm so happy to be here and have a little chat with you guys. I think everything is working out fine today. I'm going to move this aside. It's on the way. All right. Okay, so. Okay, welcome to the live broadcast. My name is Saro, I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. If this is your first time and you wanna become an educated, educated dog lover and have a healthy and happy, well-behaved dog, consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell icon as well so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or I go live. Thank you for being here. And uh, today I wanted to talk a few things, but few things, uh, but also I'm here to answer your monthly questions. If you have any questions, let me know, <clears throat> and I'll answer them in this live broadcast. It's a hot day, and it's nice and hot, and um, it's summer, and it's really hot in m m most places. Uh, at least in this part of uh, Canada is now very hot. And I wanted to remind you to not to leave your dog in your car, no matter how, how many windows you have open uh, or you parked under the shade or you think it's not that long, you're not gonna leave your dog long in the car. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Uh, the temperatures uh, in the car can rise rapidly, fast, and it can become really hot inside of the car. Uh, no matter how short your stop is or if you're parked under a shade or anything like that, it's just uh, in general, it doesn't work. It's not, it doesn't have a good outcome. So. I highly suggest you not to leave your dog in the car. And also, in general, dogs being left alone itself, it's a stressful situation, it's a stressful thing for them. On top of that, they have to deal with the, uh, the, the, the fact that they're heating up and it's, it's hot and it's uncomfortable. It becomes really a bad idea. They become really stressed and it doesn't, get them, um, doesn't help them to deal with, <clears throat> you know, this situation easily. <clears throat> so I highly suggest you to come up with some other solutions if you're going to have to leave your dog um, somewhere, uh, especially in the car. If you have to leave, you think that you have to leave your dog in the car for a period of time, I suggest you to either leave your dog with some friend or family member. Uh, daycare, uh, groomers out, so they will take in your dog, you know, just say, I need to go to do certain chores, I need to leave my dog here for, I don't know, two hours or whatever, here's 20 bucks, let my dog stay here in a cooler place. So it's better to leave your dog in a safer place than car. Car inside of the car, it's not a safe idea. Um, last, this week actually, on Monday, I posted a video about fostering. I uh, interviewed Rachel Fasaro. I hope you watched that video. If you haven't watched the video, it's uh, one, of the, one of my last latest uh, uploads, uh, videos that I've uploaded. Um, not today, but the Monday one. Um, I highly recommend you to go ahead and watch it. Uh, we talked about fostering and uh, the benefits of fostering for dogs and you. And this was very interesting conversation that we had. Um, if you are interested, um, if this is a good idea also, if you're thinking of getting a dog, if you're thinking that I wanna get a dog, I don't know what to do, where to, to start getting a dog, how, what do I need to know, what do I, how, what, how does it, feel like, how does it look like to have a dog, I highly suggest you to start fostering a dog. Uh, it's kind of a testing 
you know it's a good idea for you and also your the dog that you're fostering uh, not only you're helping that dog to be home in a home setting and have a better chance of being adopted in near future you're also able to test uh, to see if if it's a if having a dog is a good idea in general it does it work with your lifestyle does it help you in overall to have a dog in your life it's a good idea to test the idea of whether it's a good idea to have a dog in general or not um, but i suggest you highly suggest you to start fostering a dog and uh, test it see uh, if you can have a dog in your life does does the having a life having a dog in your life in your living room in your kitchen does it fit right does it look right does it feel good to have a dog in your kitchen to have a dog in your living room to have a dog in your life in general test it to see how it feels like see if you enjoy having the dog if, if the size of the dog is it's an issue for you then you can uh, think about it uh, whether you want to go bigger it's okay to go have a bigger dog or it's okay to have a smaller dog or big dogs doesn't work in our life in our home we better think about smaller dog things like that you know it gives you a, so much opportunity and so much uh, ideas for you to learn from just fostering a dog so fostering a dog is basically you have a dog in your life in your home for a period of time until this dog is adopted and they find a good home for this dog and then you can let uh, uh, that dog go and then foster another dog so this dog could be living with you for a couple of weeks a month few months even uh, so just having that opportunity to save a life uh, you know bringing a dog to your life uh, and not only saving it from the shelter living in the shelter and giving a good home it gives you a good idea also whether you know it's a good idea in general to have a dog in your life or maybe that dog it may end up to be your dream dog maybe you get to like that dog and then maybe you're gonna keep that dog you never know soft tundra 595 is in the house thank you for being here uh, first comment your channel is growing so fast yes it is growing very fast i'm very uh, excited and very um, uh, happy about it. Um, it it shows that what i'm doing uh, it's uh, it's working and it's helping dog owners i'm very excited for the future uh, yes, um, I will keep up the good work. Yes, thank you. I will, and I, it's all because of you, you know, viewers like you who, who is supporting me, and I really love it. So, if if this is your first time and you're here, welcome. Uh, my name is Sal. I'm a dog trainer, also educate dog owners. That's the very important part of my mission: educating dog owners. Um, so I just talked about fostering. So fostering is a is another option of owning a dog and getting educated about dogs. Um, in my opinion, everybody loves dogs. Most people love do love dogs, but my goal is to help you to become an educated dog lover. There's a difference between a dog lover and an edu educated dog lover. Uh, educated dog lover does everything correctly, does everything right, everything works out, the dog lives ha happily ever after. A dog lover has a dog who has behavioral issues. That's the difference. I hope you understand the difference between a dog lover and educated dog lover. I, my goal is to help you to become an educated dog lover. Let me put my glasses on. Cute cupcake is in the house. Um, Lido Pinos uh, from the Philippines. It is my first time to watch. Thanks for being generous. Thank you for being here. Um, Lido, 
Pino uh, from Philippines. That is exciting. That is amazing that uh, we are talking about dogs in Philippines, uh, from Philippines, in Canada, from Canada. It's just global. So thank you for being here and thank you for um, being live with me in here. Uh, if you have any questions, let me have those questions in the chat area and I'll, happy, I'll be happy to answer them. This is the reason why I do this mainly because I can reach the whole world. I can literally reach the whole world and grab everybody and, and, and shake their hands and, and you know, I, I, I can pet your dogs. You know, here's my dog. At Jonah and that's Harvey. Jonah is um, is not with us anymore. He passed away last year. He was 16, and I have Harvey with me uh, today. He's eight, and he's doing very well, and he's healthy. So I can uh, I can reach you from where, wherever you are, and we can have conversations and we can uh, talk about dogs from all over the world. And thank you for being here and uh, welcome. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I was talking about educated dog lovers. So don't forget if you have any questions, leave the questions in the chat area or answer them. Any problems that you have, I can help you with anything that you, you any problem that you have. Educating dog owners is my passion and is my goal. And I'm here to help you to achieve that uh, level of being an educated dog lover. Cute Cupcake says, by the way, I love the, the name, Cute Cupcake. Uh, it is still possible to train my 10 months old Labrador retriever, retriever for obedience. Is it still well, uh, possible? Of course it is possible. 10 months old, it's still a puppy. So this is a good question, actually. I was going to talk about it and I was going to answer and also make a video about it too. And we have another question from Jemima Sai. Can I still teach my dog to praise if I have always used treats? Very good question. So we have a couple of good questions. I'm going to answer them right away. All right. So I'm going to answer the question from Cute Cupcake. I love that name. If it's still possible to train a 10 months old uh, Labrador Retriever for obedience, of course it is possible. You know, all you have to do is to think of uh, five things that you have to provide for your dog. Five daily essential needs of your dog, and it will make it, make it so much easier. So these five essential daily needs are exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection. Exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection. So if you provide these five essential needs for your dog, it doesn't matter what age your dog is, you can train, you can impact, you can have um, a great dog. Uh, it's never too late to train a dog. Uh, the saying of uh, you can always train an old dog new trick is, is very true, actually. Uh, you can train a puppy as early as three months old uh, as, and a dog as old as 15 year old. You can still train them. It doesn't matter what age they are. All it matters is if you stick to a plan and you follow that plan. And my plan that I usually suggest you to follow is following and providing these five daily essential needs for your dogs, which are exercise, you exercise your puppy, it's a 10 month old puppy, I suggest you to exercise your puppy for, for I would say about uh, half an hour, maximum twice a day, okay? So twice a day you're gonna exercise your puppy for half an hour at each time. And then you're gonna train your puppy. If you wanna start training your puppy, what you do is, you watch my videos on my channel. Uh, my channel, if you go to my channel and then go to playlist, and then on the playlist, uh, choose obedience training using play and praise. I have all the basic obedience commands 
uh, how to teach your dog. You can watch those every day. Practice with your pu puppy for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You watch the video, practice the video, the the techniques that you learn. Practice it for 10, 15 minutes, uh, and then train your dog. So in, you're going to watch the video how to teach your dog to sit. You're going to watch it. You're going to learn how to do it. You're going to go and practice it with your dog for 15 minutes every day until your puppy starts to sit on command. Once it starts sitting on command, you're going to go to the next command, which is stay. You're going to learn, watch the video, learn how to teach your dog to stay. You're going to start practicing your, your, your stay with your dog for 15 minutes a day, for a month or two months, and on and on and on. That's how easy it is. Just watch the videos, practice them for 15 minutes a day, and <clears throat> take your time. It doesn't matter if it takes you a month or a week or three months, whatever it takes. Just practice every day for 15 minutes. So you exercise your puppy for half an hour, twice a day, and then train your dog. And then you can take your dog for socialization, let your dog, your puppy socialize with other dogs, other people, other environments, other smells, sounds, things like that. And then bring and, you know, offer care. Care now, you know, it could be feeding, grooming, uh, taking to the bed, all kinds of things. All these things are part of care and then share affection. The last thing your dog needs is affection. Affection, I suggest you to use it as a reward. So what I mean by that is whenever you're teaching your dog something and your dog is learning and it does it, you say, good boy, good girl, praise your dog, reward your dog. Every time your dog does something great, pray, praise or play. So use affection as a reward, not don't share affection just because your puppy is cute. You want to share affection when your dog is doing something right, something correct. Then you can share affection. So if you stick to this plan, exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection, and stick to it for a few months, you can train any dog. Doesn't matter how old or how uh, young they are. I hope that answers your question. Now, Jemmy, Jemmy Masai is saying, can I teach my dog through praise if I have always used treats? One of the problems with treat training, besides being, uh, I'm gonna answer this question, uh, Jemmy Masai, uh, one of the problems with treat training is that treat training uh, causes health issues. Every time you're feeding your dog, it, in raises the it spikes the insulin level. So besides it having health issues, causing health issues, it makes you and your dog to depend on treats. It's not one way. You need to have, you start depending on treats to get your dog to do something. And then your dog depends on you to give it treats in order to do something. So it's a bad combination in general. But anytime you stop using treats is a good start. I want you, actually I was gonna talk about this, I want you to start challenging yourself and your dog. Um, start today. Everything that you've learned in the classroom or you've known or you've watched videos or you know things and you practice with your dog, do exactly the same thing that you, you're doing, but instead of giving treats to your dog, just say, good boy, good girl, or just pet your dog, or just play with your dog. If your dog has a favorite toy, grab that toy and play with your dog. Give it to your dog, let it play for a few minutes. Let's say you, I want to ask my dog to sit, and I tell it to sit, and I say, Rover, sit, Rover sits, I throw the toy at it, let it play for a minute or two, grab the toy, uh, run around and ask him to sit. Now your dog is saying, oh, my reward 
instead of being treats, is the toy, is the game, is the, is the interaction that I'm getting with, with my owner. Or you can say, oh, but good boy, good girl, what a girl. Uh, things like that. Every time your dog sits, you say, good boy or good girl. And the dog says, wow, every time I sit, my, my human praises me, interacts with me, pays attention to me. So obviously, it's gonna, it's, for first few days, it's gonna be kind of like, what the hell is going on? Why I'm not getting treats? I used to get treats. We had this deal. I said, you give me treats. But now you're not giving me, it's gonna be a little bit strange and difficult for you and for your dog, but don't let it turn you off of not training your dog. Training a dog is, is in my opinion, is not giving rewards in general. It's not give and take thing. You know, we, we think that's how it is. We think that if, we, I, if, if I ask my dog to do something, my dog has to get something from me. I want you to change the way you're thinking about dogs in general and dog training. I want you to think that your dog will do anything for you for free. For free. You don't even have to give your dog any reward. You don't have to give anything to your dog. It, it will do it for free. The problem is that we start giving things to our dogs. Even the play or the praise is basically not necessary. I don't want to say it's not needed, but it's a good start. Once your dog learns how to sit, you don't have to reward your dog over and over. One of the situations and problems with treat training is that most dog owners, and, and gen in general, dog, dog trainers, they, I believe, they always suggest to dog owners to fade out the treat as time goes by. So, for example, you, this is the problem actually. When you start training your dog to teach your dog to sit, you give 10 treats in the beginning. And then you start giving eight, and then six, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then one, and then every five, six, you give one treat. That's quite called fading out. That's what you're supposed to do. But not most dog owners do that. They stick to the treat training and giving treats forever. So the dog never learns to do things for you. And that is one of the problems of treat training. I hope that makes sense. Uh, this is why you don't want to use, in general, treats. Uh, rewards that I suggest you to, to use are rewards that I call them natural rewards. So when I say good boy or good girl, this is something that I'm, I'm celebrating inside, right? And I'm sharing that celebration with my dog, right? I'm saying, you know, mentally I'm rewarding my dog. This is a natural form of uh, rewarding a dog. When we are playing with our dogs, this is another natural form of uh, reward. Uh, that's because your dog is saying, hmm, you're interacting with me. It's the interaction, the, the, the invisible interaction that you're having with your dog is what it's, it matters to your dog. That's what it, uh, that's what it matters. Thunder, thunder, Tough Tundra 595 has to go. You're always on the go, <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you for coming uh, and staying with me until now. Thank you for being here. Um, but that's, uh, I'll answer your question, Tough Tundra, as well. So I believe you have a question. So I hope that answered your question, uh, Jemima Sai. Uh, yes, you can still use praise instead of treats for your dog. Uh, and Tough Tundra 595 was saying, why does my, my dog sometimes go to the bathroom inside the house and not using those pads? My dog used to be, do it when I first got my dog, but my dog doesn't do it now. 
My dog is putty trained and I putty trained him fast. Okay, so yeah, that was another thing that I was going to talk about. I have a list of things that I was going to talk. Um, um, do, do, do. All right, so let me answer this question. So why is it that your dog, even though it's been potty trained, all of a sudden starts doing its business inside of the house? So depending on your dog's age, I would say this, when this, thing, this behavior happens is usually when they are at least four or five months older, that's when they start showing this behavior. So the reason they do this is, one is because uh, could be that they are not fully house trained. You think they are, but they are not. They don't understand the concept of what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to do my business. Um, so what happens is your dog gets confused, doesn't know what it's supposed to do. So that, so that beside, there might be something in your life that is causing your dog to be stressed. The dogs are very connected to their surroundings. So if in their surroundings things are not going well, they respond and they get stressed and they, uh, the way they share their stress is by doing their business inside of the house. They're giving you or the people or the, the individuals who are around the, uh, living around they're giving the signals that there's something wrong, there's something going on that I don't like. It. So it's a signal. They're giving you a signal that there's something going on. There might be something like either a new family member has come into your house, a new family member maybe has left the house, maybe you brought a new furniture in the house, maybe um, the dog's routine has been... Um, uh, has been changed, especially during the summertime when the kids are off school, usually the routine changes, so the kids stay home, so the routine is different now. So this routine, when it's different, uh, it stresses the dog, it causes the dogs to have uh, some form of stress, to build some form of stress, therefore they get stressed, and they leave messages to tell you that they are stressed. So for instance, one of my clients uh, actually a few weeks ago told me that their dog was doing fine until a few weeks ago, the dog started doing the same thing, doing the business inside of the house. So a few weeks ago, that's when the schools were, were off and so the dog used to go, uh, used to wake up at 6.30 and then go for a business, do its walk and business and then come back and have breakfast and all blah, blah. But because the kids were home, um, the kids were sleeping in and the family was sleeping in a little bit more. So 7.30 or 8 o'clock, they would wake up and maybe take the dog out for a quick walk and come back or let it in the yard. So the dog didn't like the change that had happened. He used to wake up at 6.30, go for a walk, do his business, do his thing, his routine, and come back and uh, have breakfast and on and on. But because the routine had changed, uh, the dog got st stressed. So there, there could be any little things that can cause uh, your dog to get stressed and um, react. So, Hopefully that answers your question as well. So I believe um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short session, live session. Uh, if you are new here and you want to become an educated dog lover and have a great, well-behaved, healthy and happy dog, consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, leave those questions in the comments area. I will answer them and I will always read them and answer them. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in my future videos. Take care, have fun with your dog.